Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Ed from I Bring Back, and we're continuing our two of the basic plot functions within R. I told you last time that we were going to spend some time in the future videos discussing how different variable types respond to the plot command, or rather, how the plot command responds to input in those various variable types. So, the future is now. I'm going to show you how that happens. Let's take a look. So we learned in the last video and a couple other times throughout these tutorials that if you feed the plot command or that plot function a set of vectors or x and y values, you're going to get a pretty intuitive scatter plot. And we're going to take a look today at what happens if you give it input other than those types of commands. So let's start with just a single vector of numerical input. So let's say x has the values from 1 to 100. All right, and we'll go ahead and plot x. When we do this, we will see that it looks an awful lot like that linear part of the Cartesian plane, but let's pay close attention to the labels on each axis here. You'll see the leftmost axis, uh, the, the vertical axis is labeled X. So those are X values, but the horizontal axis, or rather axis, is labeled index, which means this is simply where that value appears within the vector. So if we were to reassign x, let's say x can just have uh, some random values. So x will say it's random values on a normal distribution. Uh, we'll take 100 of them. And then we will once again plot x. You'll see we just get whatever random value that was. Most of them are between negative 2 and 2. And they're just listed by their index, not organized in any other way. So if you feed the plot function a single numerical vector, it will just plot those values on a horizontal axis in the order they appear in the vector. Not terribly useful. There's probably better ways to handle this, and a simple one would be to do something like a histogram, which we can do uh, with that hist function you'll remember from previous videos. Then we can see a frequency distribution that's a lot more informative for that type of data. So, that's single numerical vectors, but that's by no means the only type of data. Let's see what else we can plot. Well, as often as not, if it ain't numbers, it's letters. So let's take a look at letters, and here's a little shortcut within R. You'll see that letters variable comes pre-assigned in the workspace just as lowercase a to z. Similarly, the uppercase letters are available to you. But if we plot letters, let's see what he gives us. So just a simple character vector. We've got 26 values, blank one each. And the null device will open up blank. And as I'm sure you saw, we get a few error and warning messages. Basically, it does not handle characters that way. It's not something you can do. You can't generate a meaningful plot using just the basic plot command out of a character vector. So what might you do? Uh, the simple answer is to turn it into a factor. And we've talked previously in other videos about that factor variable. And we've kind of avoided the subject. But this is one very nice use for factor variables. It says... We're going to put these things into categories, or, or bins, if you will. And then you can do things like make a bar plot out of them. So let's generate some more letters and show you how that's done. So as you can imagine, a bar plot of letters in the alphabet is a pretty uninteresting chart because they all appear exactly once. So let's spice it up a little bit with randomization, which is something R excels at. Let's say X is going to get sample of letters. We'll say we'll sample it 1,500 times, and we're going to set the rep parameter to true, which is the replacement. So what's going to happen here is we're going to sample this list of lowercase letters 1,500 times with replacement, so we can get one letter more than once. And if we go ahead and run that line, we can look at X, big old block of letters. And the way that I like to do this, certainly not the only way to do it, is to quickly make a factor of something temporarily. You can use the table function. So we take a table of X. You'll see it shows us how many times each value appears, and if we plot the table of x, then we'll get a bar plot. So we'll see that in this bar plot, which is not the most handsome bar plot, there actually is a bar plot function that works separately. Uh, how many times each letter appears? Looks like our winner is probably E, showing up 70 times or so, so terribly exciting. That's an understanding just of how you might coerce something that's in character format onto the plot screen. Kind of a situation you wouldn't run into often. Just wanted to show you how the plot command responds to various factor types. 
And you saw also that it could accept a function as input. So this is why we're spending time with the plot function, because it is rich, it is deep. You can make prettier things in more specific contexts with other packages and other functions, but plot runs the gamut, and it's here for us in just about every scenario where we need it. So we'll keep digging around and learning about this plot function in future videos. Again, my name is Ed, working for my bring back. Keep coming back, keep pushing play. We'll keep feeding you good info, and hopefully everybody benefits.